it needs to be transmitted to the larger distance for a smaller distance it can be transmitted for few meters or few 100 meters not more than that but to in order to transmit to the larger distance so what we need we need to up convert it at the higher carrier frequency such that it can be transmitted so now the conversion of low frequency which will be our let's say voice which is below 4 kilohertz uh, 4 kilohertz into the signal so that it can be transmitted properly and received at the other end and reproduced properly such that so whatever we are sending here so we should get it here back at the receiver so first we will modulate it to the some lower frequency maybe some megahertz then as you know modulator will be you can use different type of modulation techniques am fm pm so it will generate some uh, that is intermodulation product from is some higher higher product so because it is having the non linear device so we use the if filter we will pick only the desired frequency which is desired so this is the output of this after the out, the output of the ir filter will be 10 to 100 megahertz not more than that it is low frequency basically then after that what we do we up convert it to the higher frequency using mixer and local that is local oscillator we mix with the uh, local oscillator so we will get the higher frequency again the mixer will have non linear device we will need summation and addition of frequency components so you will we will pick whatever is desired using the band pass filter and so finally we will after that what we do we amplify the signal amplify the, so you, you know the signal to uh, volts so in order to transmit with the antenna so what we do we need a power amplifier or we just amplify the signal it is a large signal amplifier basically and finally we transmit the signal into the that is high frequency signal to the free space into using the antenna antenna is a transducer which acts as a which convert your electrical signal to the free space waves now finally the signal reaches signal is traveling into the channel and it reaches the receiver it reaches the receiver now it has to be reproduced back whatever signal we want so the signal receives here and since you know antenna is generally a wide band device antenna generally most of the researchers design antenna wide band antenna Uh, so after that what we because if you have anything wide band so it will have wider bandwidth and it will pick wider signal also as well as noise also so what we want we want to only focus on the signal whatever is desired so what we do we apply a band pass filter to pick only the signal desired signal after that we apply a low noise amplifier low noise amplifier act as an amplifier so it will it will be as name indicates low noise amplifier so from where we will have the noise we will have the noise from the signal signal and the some of the electronic components whatever we have so if you design so so in low noise amplifier we choose high that is means the we choose the electronic transistor such a way that the noise introduced by the component should be minimum but we cannot It is not in our control that we want to uh, control the whatever the received noise. Only the noise introduced by the component should be as small as possible. So we use some very good component, the gallium nitride, and different novel technologies are being used employed for that. And finally, we will use the down convert to the using the mixer and the local oscillator. Mixer will uh, local oscillator and finally again because it will generate the numerous frequency component we will have the if filter if amplifier demodulated whatever the modulation we did it and finally we get the data out from so data out will be our signal whatever let's say voice video or any data now this is the rf transmitter and rf receiver we have now you can see in this rf transmitter and receiver so what we have we have different types of components some components are active in nature some components are passive active means which uses your transistors and transistors diode which cannot miss uh, yeah which which draw the power from the from the source are yeah from the source that is dc source so the it can be broadly classified the active and passive component the passive components are the active components are the modulator mixer local oscillator power amplifier Here again, the low noise amplifier, mixer, local oscillator, 
I have amplified. And the passive components are filters and antennas. So we can have the active antennas also, active filters also, but not much to the much higher frequency, much lower frequency. Depends on the uh, yeah, much lower frequency. Maybe few, maybe few gigahertz, not more than that. Okay. So now what we can say that so our so two important passive components are antennas and bandpass filter. So our group. Here at IIT Khadakpur, and I mean, when I was there at Khadakpur and IIT Roorkee, we are working on antennas and filters. So we will use. I will show you how to use this, how to design the antenna, or yeah, in this lecture I will show you. I will just show you how to design the antennas using the SIW filt SIW technology. Okay. So now, as you know, before so we have shown you different types of components. That is active component, passive component. The basic building block of any component is a transmission line. Means whether you design a amplifier, you design a this filter, or you design a antenna, it's transmission line. And there are different types of transmission line which are there. So there are conventional transmission line which exist, uh, means which was having the that is 3D version, that is conventional transmission line waveguides. So they are open two wire open line, wire line that is then coaxial line. Rectangular waveguide, circular waveguide. So these are these type of conventional transmission lines are good for long distance communication. Means they are good. They can be used for long distance communication because the signal attenuates very less for the long because the signal in rectangular waveguide we don't have any. It is traveling into the air of the space, so we don't have any degradation in the signal. In the coaxial line also, we just use the material of the electrical field is such a way that we have lesser attenuation. We will have attenuation, but lesser attenuation. Okay, now the disadvantage of this thing, these are the 3D type of structures. Now, 3D and another, so if I want to club this thing with my transmitter or receiver, I can design filter using the rectangular waveguide or circular waveguide also. But the, the components will be bulky in nature and there will be high uh, means high performance components will be there, but we don't require for certain applications we require it, but always we don't require it. So for that people have started focusing on the micro strip or strip line based components. They are good for microwave integrated circuits. They are basically planar structure. They have basically they are called 2.5D because the thickness is very small compared to the X and Y that is compared to the footprint. So they are basically planar component, planar component. So some of them are strip lines, micro strip line, slot line, and coplanar wavegate. I will not go into the details, just to show you some of the planar transmission lines are there. Okay. Now, so what I will just tell you. So uh, means so what scientists have thought that why can't so the planar transmission lines have certain advantages? They are very compact. They are having low profile, lightweight components can be designed of it and they require inexpensive fabrication. But the disadvantages are they are having the significant losses because dielectric material is there. Dielectric material will have losses, especially as you go and if you increase the frequency, especially at five millimeter wave frequency. And since they are open in open structure, so they have radiation leakage and they have undesired coupling with the adjacent elements. And they have limited power handling capability because of the dielectric material. Because dielectric material will have certain breakdown voltage. So as it reaches certain breakdown voltage, so it will not, it will get burnt. It will not allow the signal to pass through. Now, so these are the planar structures. Now the 3D structures, that is, circular waveguide or rectangular wave, has again certain disadvantages. They are low loss. Low loss means their path loss is very less. Or if you design any components which will have very low loss and they have very good quality factor, quality factor here at India is very high. Maybe you can achieve the quality factor of seven to eight thousand, but in the planar structure, you will have only 300, maximum 300 micro strip line and micro strip uh, resonator. And they have very good power handling capability. But disadvantage is that they are bulky in nature, they are very heavy. You cannot, it cannot be used for your mobile communication or maybe for a smart for very handheld systems and they are expensive and transitions are required because you will design your circuit into the microstrip and so you require transitions transitions are required so 
all of them let's say planar structures have certain advantage and disadvantage and 3d structures have certain advantage and disadvantage so what researchers have thought why can't we combine the advantages of both the structures and get out with some new type of structures new type of structure technology which can be used for the design of microwave components so that is called substitute integrated waveguide technology so what researchers did so they did what they did they have the copper cladded dielectric material so they basically represent uh, they basically have the top and they want to implement the rectangular waveguide in a planar form so what they did the copper top and bottom copper sheet are as it is the side wall of the rectangular waveguide is realized by the a series of metallic vias here it is shown here as a means series of metallic vias introduced at a certain distance miss uh, now so it is basically a planar form of a rectangular waveguide dielectric filled rectangular waveguide so its quality factor will be in between this one the microstrip line or the planar structures and the waveguide so if you can have empty waveguide its quality factor will be much so its quality factor will be 6 200 700 and if you make it empty remove the dielectric material it will have maybe 3000 or 4000 it can achieve the 3000 it can achieve the quality factor okay so now i will start with the history from where does this siw started so siw started with the japanese group so basically they have given in 1994 they published a patent they call it waveguide line similar to so they have introduced the waveguide line is they have proposed something like parallel plate waveguide now after that uh, means in 2000 they published a paper also in 1998 so they call it siw as a laminate waveguide means they have given certain different names laminate waveguide parallel plate waveguide so it was just they have initially designed trying to design some type of waveguide so but after that means it was not very popular at that time so in 2000 basically in 2002 In early 2002, the group at Royal Military College, that is Kiu and Desland, have started working, and they have started working designing components. Till then, nobody was designing components. They, this only Japanese group was working on that, just to have the analysis of the waveguide, and that's SIW structure. Now they started designing the components, filters, antennas, amp in amplifier and oscillators. They are using it. So it. and so after that you can see so they have designed some transitions how to launch the power into the siw waveguide then filters then antennas they have modeled it they means they did lot of work in the, in this one and then it became very popular and nowadays people are working on it nowadays if you see the literature siw you will find near about more than 2000 3000 papers uh, 3000 journal not 2000 2000 general papers and they are designing basically antenna arrays basically they are replacing the whatever the uh, they whatever we have in the 3d form they are replacing in the planar form okay so now just some of the basic design parameters of the siw it is a rectangular waveguides as i told you in the planar form so here a series of metallic vias is introduced in this one and the distance between the vias is chosen so it is basically dominated by the this, so it has different parameters first is width of the waveguide width of the waveguide means you know uh, in rectangular waveguide you have the cut off frequency cut off frequency cut off frequency for the dominant mode dominant mode is te 10 mode so here also it supports only te n0 or m0 modes it, it is not supporting tm modes the reason behind is that for supporting the tm mode there is, is a there must be a surface current which is continuous along the direction on the side walls in direction of direction of propagation since it does not have the continuous side walls so it has the discrete side walls so the tm mode will not be supported by this structure that is tm to z will be not be supported people have using different types of something uh, means if you see in the literature people just say that te te to x or t to y means basically te or tm to the direction of propagation it is not supporting so another is diameter of the holes the so diameter also it depends on the at what frequency you want to use it so diameter of hole decided by that and another is longitudinal spacing that is spacing between this one now what is the spacing between the two vias ideally it should be s equals to d that is just vias should be side by side but it is not practically possible 
so what people have tried to that is they have shown through experiment or through simulation if you choose s equals to 2d that is good enough for the confinement of electromagnetic field inside the wave gate there will be no leakage of electromagnetic energy outside the wave however for certain applications for leaky wave antennas so what we we uh, leaky wave antennas which will have certain characteristics uh, which certain characteristics so what we what we do here so there we apply the we uh, we intentionally want the leakage of electromagnetic energy from the side walls so we a periodically arrange or periodically arrange the side walls of the that is vias of the this one or leaky wave antennas okay now here are the some of the design parameters so again the uh, since it is a waveguide waveguide will have cutoff frequency it is governed by this one that is that is c by that is c by 2 pi under root epsilon r m pi by a and pi by b that is same waveguide formula exists here only it is just a rectangular waveguide only with the because of introduction of this series of metallic vias so its effective width is changed so effective width will be changed so that is it is it depends on the again this has been shown through the simulations or the uh, it, that is simulation empirically shown there is, there is no mathematical proof of it that is empirically shown that is means if you choose w effective to be w minus this formula then you will have means you whatever you do in the whatever the resonance frequency or cutoff frequency you choose will be good enough approximation for your application or design of any components now again for this one so now what should be the value of this distance what should be the value of uh, this cut off the, the ratio of the that is d by lambda c and s by lambda c lambda c is the cut off frequency of the interest so if we so what we have shown here so here if s is if it is very important that is if it is unrealized means if it is very small s is very d uh, s is very small then d means basically then confine if it is very close s equals to d then it is confined and if you choose s much much greater than d then it is not confined then it is called forbidden region so basically if you see here the region which is shown here is the blue in color is of region of interest we can we can design the components only for choosing the value of s and d only for this region if you choose any region out of it it, it won't be realizable and it won't be good enough we we'll have good enough so so what the researchers have thought so after that what they did they have designed the component and means for any transmission line you must know the transmission line characteristics transmission line will have two characteristics one is propagation constant and the another is characteristic impedance and loss three things because this is a new type of transmission line so in 2002 they have designed they have come up with the so it they have shown through the equivalent circuit and measurement and full wave em simulation so it holds good and it is similar to the whatever we have for the that is te10 mode that is they have shown in te10 mode of the rectangular waveguide it have similar characteristics like this so they come up with the propagation constant and the characteristic impedance and the losses also so they have shown the losses are very less if you intentionally choose the d by lambda the losses will be less then you can design the low loss component out of it okay now another thing is once the transmission line is siw wave the transmission line is there then to launch the power because we will be using the designing to the microwave component the planar microcon to launch the power so there must be some coupling mechanism or because uh, we want to connect it so we will have only that is micro, either you use micro strip feed or you use this one or you or you use this one uh, cpw feed that there several of feeding techniques are available so to couple the power so again it depends on the it depends on what type of we want so there are different types of couplings that is central coupling is there it is something like inset coupling basic thing is that we must choose this coupling properly that is whatever the power we are launching from the input port should reach inside this cavity means should reach inside otherwise if if there is no input coupling proper proper input coupling then power will not reach then power will die down itself in the it will decay as a evanescent wave similarly for different types of other that we will discuss later on offset coupling double type of coupling quadrature coupling then cpw based coupling then talk i will not go into details so there are numerous type of techniques are there so by which 
basic thing is this matching of input impedance to the coupling this this waveguide so here if you can see here it is something like cpw coupling with the waveguide so here the input input impedance of 50 ohm should be it should because it will not have 50 ohm input impedance so it should be transition should be there so 50 ohm should be matched to the input impedance of your rectangular wave of your siw waveguide and similar other type of that is probe coupling so different types of couplings are there so again so again advantages and disadvantages i will not go into the details so again same i have discussed details so main thing is that uh, yeah main thing is that uh, in microstrip line or microstrip linear components they don't have many important things limitation is that they don't have since they are wave I mean, they are not wave guiding structures but it is guiding structure microstrip line or microstrip line based on structures it can support all the frequency component because it supports the tem mode which has the cut off frequency of 0 hertz so you can start from the 0 hertz to any frequency you can design the components but here you have the disadvantage that due to the guiding structure that it, so it will have some cut off frequency i cannot design below that so yeah below that that is will have so that is it will have the cut off frequency of so means i can design higher frequencies so here are the some of the components which our group has designed so they have designed some planar filters then sorry planar antennas then antennas are some of i will discuss few of them then 3d antennas all are based on a set of blue components that is 3d antennas we want we will replicate this horn antenna in planar form that is in 3d form it will be low cost solution or maybe light weight components can be designed and similarly this one this guy have the uh, planar reconfiguration then filters are we have designed numerous filters out of it using the set of technology okay so now so we will start with the rectangular siw cavity so as i have discussed the siw in siw what we have we have the side walls and the and the top and bottom metallic plates and there will be there will be diagram tail now in the front and the back are open so if i cover if i introduce the series of vrs at the side and the bottom at the front and the bottom of the this one so what we will have we will have the uh, we will have the cavity we will form a cavity because cavity will be a closed structure so it's to the top view it is isometric view so you will form a cavity so now cavity will be it is a, it is similar to the rectangular cavity rectangular wave guide cavity or cubical cavity that is cuboidal cavity so it will be have like a similar thing so the basically cavity is a resonator it will resonate at certain frequency yeah it will resonate at certain frequency and so but the disadvantage but the all the formulas of the rectangular cavity holds good only as i told you the w effective and length effective will change and will be decided by the this formula which has been derived empirically and height is the it means that is x that is w effective l effective and x cross y cross z it will become a cavity so the rectangular here it is te mode rectangular cavity rectangular resonant frequency of a te m and p mode of siw is given by this formula it is m by m pi by a n pi by b p pi by c and 1 over under root 2 mu root mu epsilon so this is so you can get the calculate the frequency out of it okay so this is now first what we want to do so this is a rectangular side blue cavity so rectangular we will want to study its behavior how cavity will have the cavity is a resonator basically it is a equivalent cavity resonator so we want to uh, study the resonance behavior miss what would be its resonance behavior so what we have started with the square side of blue cavity so instead of taking the rectangular cavity we have taken the square side of blue cavity i will tell you why it is a three isometric view so here we have plotted some of the modes that is te110 mode te210 mode te120 mode te220 mode so so here it is clear from the you can see the 3d view so i have chosen certain dimensions of a a is 15 mm and dielectric material that is duroid and substrate thickness this one so basically te110 mode te110 means 110 m and p one is first index first this is so index shows number of half wavelength variation in the x direction this one in the x direction 
and second index shows the number of half wavelength variation in the y direction and third index shows the number of wavelength variation in the z direction in all the th all the modes you can see the number of wavelength variation in z direction is zero because we say that or we assume this is the thickness is very small compared to the uh, x and y dimensions so we will say that the fields will be nearly constant in the z direction that is why we have zero you can see the thickness is 0.5 and the x and y is 15 mm nearly 30 times it is uh, x and y so it is very thin now for this one the resonant now half wavelength you can see in the x direction one half wavelength variation that is zero maximum then zero so it will be one maxima is there so it will have this variation so similarly in the y direction also it will have zero that is uh, minima maximum and zero we will have this field so so this is to because we cannot plot it we cannot to we, we will we, we will plot generally we plot the 3D version, a planar version, so in order to have the better understanding, so we represent the fields which are on the plus z side. So this will be plus, we represent it by plus. And similarly, if you see in the plus one, so here it is shown 3D fields also. Similarly, 210 in x direction, it will have number of half wavelength, two half wavelength variation. It can be seen here, one half that is zero maximum, then zero, then maximum, then zero. But it is Having it is changing its phase, it is clearly visible from the 3D pattern. It is something like this. So you have zero, then maximum, then zero, then maximum, then zero. It is something like two half wavelength variation. But in the y direction, it is having only the one half wavelength variation. Similar explanation can be thought. So it will have this orthogonal mode, orthogonal mode of because it, orthogonal mode it has the same resonant frequency. This one, this one, eleven point seven five. The third mode is TE220 mode. It have two half wavelength variation in the x direction, two half wavelength variation in the y direction. So it is like this. These are the first few modes of the square SIW cavity. In cavity, we will have always modes with three indices. Now we will try to we will try to uh, we will move to our structures of antennas. So we have given you the brief introduction of the brief introduction of the SIW and Cavity, SIW and some of the cavity the modes. Now we will in this section. So my talk is divided into two sections. The first is first is uh, this one that is SIW slot antennas. Then another is SIW miniaturized SIW antennas. So first I will talk about SIW antenna. So first I will talk about what is a slot antenna. A slot antenna. We will be talking about the slot antenna lot. So what is a slot antenna? A slot antenna is a basically, basically a, if you have a metal, okay, if you have a metal, let's say flat metal sheet is there. If you cut anything, cut metal out of it, something like it can be rectangular, circular, means, and if you excite that slot by some mechanism, means it can be by some mechanism. So as it is shown you in the literature or in the book, you will see in the Balanis. So this is slot acts as a uh, this slot acts as a radiator and from the dominant principle it acts like a dipole dipole radiator means uh, and its radiation pattern will be similar to the dipole means not similar means it will have it now but but it will be some similar to the dipole since they have the omnidirectional radiation pattern but since what we want the directional antennas so what we do we place a another metallic sheet at the back side of this slot which will act as a reflector. So this will, so a cavity will be formed. It is something like a cavity backed slot antenna, cavity backed slot antenna. Now the radiation pattern is governed by the, the what about the resonant frequency is governed by the shape and size of the slot. Okay. So this is a slot we already have in the planar metallic form. It is something like this. You can see here. That is cavity back slot antenna. We etch a we have a copper sheet, thin copper sheet, and some solid cavity is there, and we excite now this cavity in this cavity. So uh, we excite. So uh, we miss the advantage of cavity back slot antenna. It is having high radiation efficiency because at the back side, because uh, if you see the dipole. The dipole you have the radiations in the plus z and minus z direction also. 
so it will have the but it will have radiation only the plus direction so it will have very good front to back ratio since it is having the it is something like cavity resonator based antenna radiating this lot so it will have the good isolation from the other environment means you can design so people have designed the antenna arrays or different type of these things like micro circuits antenna arrays using the slot now this is whatever we want to have in the planar form so it is something like whatever the, as i told you this this sort of using the solid cavity we will use the we will use the siw cavity and we will use the siw cavity and this radiating slot will be etched on the top of the cavity so it will be it will have nearly same performance as the cavity packed slot antenna it will be low profile low profile means have high lower thickness cost effective very less cost is involved simple implementation simpler implementation easy integration with the planar circuits okay it can be done now here if you see here you need to excite the slot the slot if you or you can do the another thing you excite the cavity let the different modes of the cavity get excited then this slot will radiate so we will use the same thing in our structure in our design so this is slot as i told you so this is slot can be of different size cavity we will be also can be different size so and they can have different feeding mechanism you can see from the first figure they have excited the cavity using the this one this is using the coaxial feed here they have excited the cavity excited the cavity using the microstrip feed main thing is that you have to couple input power from the feed line whether it is that is whether it is semi that is coaxial coaxial feed or the microstrip feed to the cavity such that that perpendicular that mode in which the slot is radiating or the cavity is radiating yeah should get excited so here it can be shown here plus sign is shown here circular cavity is shown so these are the numerous i have shown you here is taken from the literature okay so this, these are the some of the slots now to simplify or to make it more understandable to the students so here a design flow chart for the cavity back distort antenna so what are they you start a cavity means start let's say it is a flow chart first choose a cavity cavity of your own choice circular rectangular elliptical any choice you can have identify or study the modes means you study the modes using the eigen mode solver of ncs hfss or the or the cst you use that one anyone you use study the modes and then identify the mode pattern by reading the by viewing its field pattern means you study the modes what are the modes what are and you will have to identify the modes whatever you want to use it for radiation it is not like that i can use all the modes so i will choose the modes what which can be used for radiation and then depending upon the model pattern you apply the feed to excite that mode means one the excite that excitation is very important means i will tell you uh, means if i choose if i feed at a specific location a specific location that particular mode will be excited if i feed at another location then another mode will be excited then place the radiating a slot at the strategic location to facilitate radiation means you we place the slot at the locations not to have the radiations and finally you optimize the dimensions of a slot for different antenna characteristics of the bandwidth impedance bandwidth polarization and finally you fabricate the prototype and measure its characteristics so this design of flow chart needs to be performed for micro strip slot that is my, sorry siw slot based slot based antennas or cavity back the slot antennas okay now i will show you some of the examples taken from the literature then i will show you whatever our group has done so here this cavity back the slot antenna so this is the first work so i will now use my black board with white board this cavity back the slot antenna okay so in cavity back the slot antenna so this is the first and so this uses the pe okay i will use my white board so so what we have so as i told you this is the first design or design one 
design one. So we have discussed that is TE one one zero mode, TE one two zero mode, TE two one zero mode, TE two two zero mode. As I told you, so you have to pick up whatever is desired. So let us say that I identify this mode, TE one one zero mode. TE one one zero mode. If I draw in this square set of blue cavity, what should be the pattern? So it will be. I'm drawing like this. So it will be plus. Okay. So this is plus. Okay. Now, so this mode, this is we have a split. So the eigen mode solver. So it will have. This is a top view. Okay. Now this is we have. We have this type of pattern. So here, what are these? These are the iso lines. Iso lines means the elect. These are basically electric field, E field, which have the same values. So here we have drawn the. Let's like this, like this. So all these have similar values. This will have similar magnitude. So it will be, ah, uh, yeah, similar magnitude. Now, now to excite it. So how to excite it? So you can connect the field. So as you know, so you have zero electric field here, here, here at the boundary. So the magnetic field will be maximum. So magnetic field will be maximum. So I have not shown you the because electric field is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So we can excite by any anything. Means if I connect the field line, either this side, this side, this side, this side, this mode will be excited. So what we do? You can connect any of the feed lines. You can connect. So let us say that I connect this side of the cavity. We have this cavity. We have this one. Okay. So this won't be there because this is just connected. This feed line. So we will excite the. We have excited the E one one zero mode. So here the E one one zero mode is getting excited. Now, as I told you. So we want here your jet not that the catastrophic impedance is 50 ohm. So we want to launch the power. So what we have to so there are different types of because the catastrophic impedance of feed line should be matched to the catastrophic impedance of the mode. So what so that you can check it. So you can so what you can you can there are different types of in that is inset feed is there. So we do different types of like this. We remove this one. So that is inset feed is there. So our transition type is there. So different types of feeding arrangements are there. So we'll have this type of the structure. So this is this is your remove. Okay. So this will match the impedance. Once this is matched, then then what we have to do? Yeah. Okay. Please unmute. Uh, please mute yourself. Those if you have a question, you can ask. Otherwise, mute yourself. Participants, please mute yourself. Okay, now, so if now the question comes, if I, it is there. So if I s h s slot at the center of the cavity, if I h s slot now another mode is let's say I have decided h s slot in center of the cavity, will it radiate? Yes or no? I have excited, but excite. I have excited the mode. But it will will it radiate? It will not radiate. Why? Because if you see this, I will draw the equipotential line like this. So this point and this point. So basically, equipotential line. If it is exactly in the middle, so <laughs> if it is exactly in the middle, okay, exactly in the middle. Then it will not radiate because this will have equipotential, and to have to build up the electric field, <coughs> there must be some potential difference. So if I h s slot here on the top of the cavity at this location, this will radiate. Yes, this will radiate. Why? If I draw the line like this, so if you can see the potential at this point and potential at this point is different. So at this point and this point will be different. Then there will be radiation. And now in which direction will radiate? The question comes. So you know the at the center it is maximum and at the boundary it is having ground or zero. 
So that is virtual ground or AC ground. You can say that it is having zero. So now it will be you know the if you have a capacitor, parallel plate capacitor, the fields will be from this one like this. So it will like this. So it will radiate from plus to minus. Yeah. So it will radiate like this. So let's say this is the x direction. This is your y. So it will give you y polarized EM waves. In this way, this structure or this cavity will radiate. Now you can see from here also in this structure they have not introduced the slot at the center of the cavity. They have introduced the slot at a distance of somewhat offset from the center because at the center it will not radiate. And also you can see the feed lines. The feed lines is there so just to excite the particular mode. So you can this was published in 2000. This was the First paper of the planar slot antenna, 2009, 2008. It has the only bandwidth of one point, that is one point, uh, one point seven percent, and they use as a TE110 mode. And since they have the slot in the back side, so at the Z direction, so Z direction, so they are radiating. They have the Something like addition pattern, broad side addition pattern in the minus z direction. And it will have very good front to back ratio because at the back side it is nearly not radiating. Next antenna. So now we are not happy with this one. We are not happy because we say always we want more. more for an application, we want more bandwidth. So we want more bandwidth. So what people have thought that. Uh, so again, the, this paper in 2012, they come up with the how to uh, means how to increase the bandwidth. So bandwidth of a slot can be bandwidth of an antenna can be increased. Either you increase the cavity size, cavity size means you increase the cavity height. Uh, means cavity height, you increase the cavity height, then you can increase the bandwidth. But not much can be achieved, or you can achieve the larger bandwidth by mixing. Or by merging the two modes. So now the mixing the two modes. Now mixing the two modes, that is, we have the TE110 mode and TE120 mode or 210 mode. Now the mixing of modes can be done. So let's just see the mixing of modes. That is mixing of modes. So how we can do the mixing of mode? So one as as I have shown you that is TE110 mode and TE210 or TE120 mode. So here as I have shown the frequency was 7.5 gigahertz and here the frequency of something like 11.45 or something I don't remember it so something like this frequency. So there is a large difference between the near about 4 gigahertz. So I cannot bring these two frequencies closer. In the square cavity, because in the square cavity it will be. But if I choose the rectangular cavity, rectangular cavity, then what can I, uh, I choose? So my dominant mode will be TE110 mode, and another mode will be T either that is TE120 mode or TE210 mode that you can calculate from the formula. So what you can do, you can let's say it is having 8 gigahertz TE110 mode. And then you can bring it near about 9 gigahertz TE120 mode or I don't that is 210. One mode will be there, 9 gigahertz. So what we can if I choose the instead of the rectangular ca square cavity, if I choose the rectangular cavity, I can bring these two modes closer to each other. By bringing these modes closer to each other, then I can have the means I can have the mixing of mode or to achieve the wideband operation. Mixing of mode. So here I will show you how they did it. The here they have mixed that is TE110 mode with TE120 mode. I will show you how it can be achieved. That is TE110 mode and TE120 mode. First study the fields of TE110 mode. TE110 mode, this is X, they have fields like this. Plus 120 mode in x direction, only one variation so like this and this. So we'll have 
So this will be our let's say this will be plus Muslim minus. This will be plus and minus. So these frequencies are closer to each other. Now let's say that eight and nine. I'm giving you just some values. Maybe some different values will be there, but they are closer to each other if you choose the rectangular cavity. Now, if I combine these two, now the question comes: How to excite these two modes? As I told you, we have studied the mode. If I excite, let's say, if I feed from here, here, then what is going to more happen? This mode will be excited. This mode also will be excited. But if I feed from this side. This mode will be excited, but this mode be because this is having the zero field pattern here. So this mode will not be excited. So we have to choose. We have to apply the feed line systematically or accordingly, such that this mode should be excited. So you cannot have this type of feeding. Means you can have to have this step. Once this now, if I choose this one, let us say this. Let us say that this is plus. This is minus. So now I can. I now I can have both the modes will be excited because it is having the maximum here. It is having the maximum. The both modes will be excited. Now, now another thing is that how to edge the slot. If I edge a slot here, let us say that if I edge a slot at the center, I told you it will not get radiated. But if I edge a slot here, it will get radiated. Why it will get radiated means in this case it will get it because it is having the minus sign here, this minus fields and plus fields. So you know the fields moves from plus to minus. So you'll have this type of. So this mode will be excited or this mode will be radiated, but this will not participate. Again, go back to our whatever we told you. Means we will introduce somewhat offset. So if I introduce somewhat offset here, so this will be also because this is something like. On the top, you have the uh, lower value that is something like lower value here and here higher value. So you'll have like this. So, and the question comes here also. If I do it, do it here also, so here also it will get excited. In this way, both the modes, both the modes will participate in the radiation, and you will have that is you will have wider bandwidth. Wider bandwidth. So now. You can see from here, it, both they have combined the modes, and the wider bandwidth is achieved here. Wider bandwidth is achieved means it have the bandwidth from earlier it was 1.7 percent. They have increased the bandwidth from 1.7 to 6.3 percent increased bandwidth. Okay. Now again, again uh, we are not happy with that. So again means uh, we are not happy with this one again. Uh, and here you can see here. They have introduced very less feed in circuit because it helps us in excitation. Here offset is, is your slot is also offset. Means you have to check by placing the slot whether <coughs> it is prop, uh, getting excited or not. I'm sorry. Now another is they have introduced the butter that is butterfly shaped slot. That is butterfly shaped means uh, people have in 2014 butterfly shaped slot. What they did. So generally, butterfly shape structure, sorry, but, sorry, no, not butterfly. Bow tie shape structures are popular for their wide bandwidth. So the bow tie shape structure, that is this one, we have this is slot. This this will radiate only at lambda g by two. Now, if you have this type of structure, so that is bow bow tie shape structure. So it will have some short circuit here. Here means it is something like a, it will have wide band, wide impedance bandwidth, wide impedance bandwidth compared because it will having the wide wider bandwidth here. It will have only but one frequency. So that is why if you use both bow bow tie shape structures or then you can achieve the wider bandwidth. And if they have achieved the wider bandwidth of near about 10%. They have achieved. Okay, so they have achieved means they have designed the broadband antenna. Okay, so now I will take a break of five minutes. Then I will continue. If you have any questions, then we can discuss here. Or in the last few one. Anyone have any doubts? 
If you have any doubts, you can ask. No doubts. Sir, what about the rotation uh, pattern? Uh, yes. Uh, sir, what yeah, about the uh, sir, I have one Speak louder. Who is speaking? Please, please speak louder. Sir, am I audible? Please introduce yourself. Yeah, audible. Yeah, now audible. Yes, yes sir. sir. I am C. Malarvili from Rajalakshmi Institute of Technology. I, once again, you will explain about eigen modes and uh, one more modes uh, that I am not understand clearly, sir. Eigen modes in SI. Eigen modes. Okay. So eigen modes, see, eigen modes, forget about eigen modes, just the name is there. Okay. You know cavity, rectangular cavity? Sir? You know rectangular cavity? Uh, yes, sir. You know rectangular cavity? So you will be teaching or miss, you have studied during your B-Tech, the rectangular cavity, let's say, if, if the dimension ABC, so it will have the resulting frequency will be given by 1 over 2 pi under root mu epsilon that is m pi by a n pi by b plus p pi by c do you know this thing yes or no uh, no no sir no sir then it will be difficult uh, in, in the in the see in the rectangular cavity generally taught in the b tech in the cavity, what we have? Cavity resonators. So in cavity resonators, we have different resonating frequencies. That is resonating frequencies. Okay. So it will resonate at different different frequencies. Let's say so it is F naught of P E M N P. You choose M N P accordingly. That is, as we have taken, that is TE110, substitute in this thing, so you will get the one frequency. Corresponding yes. to this frequency, you will have the your electric field and magnetic field inside the cavity. Yes, sir. Okay. And so, to, so these are the basically modes of the cavity. Okay. Sir. Modes of cavity means the uh, these are the modes of the cavity modes of the cavity means these are the some of the modes of the cavity that means these structures can support these frequencies means this can support these frequencies otherwise if you use any other frequency this will not be supported by this structure okay so okay. now to, to solve to get to to find out which of the uh, which of the modes are there, which of the modes are the supported by the cavity. So straightforward, you can do the EM analysis or in the solver, that is EM solver. That is either you use NSYS HFSS, sorry, HFSS or you use CST. So there is Eigen mode solver. Okay, eigen mode okay. solver straight forward give you what are the modes. It will not give you the name, it will give you the modal frequency, it will give you the frequency and the quality factor. Means what is the quality factor of this mode and mode frequency, and correspondingly, you can plot the magnetic and electric field for this mode. So, this is basically eigen mode, whatever you are asking of. Anything else? No, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, Hello? Sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. This... Hello. Yeah, huh. tell me. This is this is Abhay, sir. I'm from JP Institute. Actually, I'm also working on the same technology SIW. Uh, okay. I'd just like to ask, sir, one question. Instead of this SIW to, uh, sorry, microstep to SIW transition based feeding structure, if you are going yeah. for a full feed or for uh, some type of uh, like insert feed, uh, then in that case, what would uh, happen? Uh, the study would uh, be remaining the same or it will change? The inset feed and another is? No, no. I'm, I'm just asking, sir, you are, you are using a microstrip to SIW transition in this case. Yeah, uh -huh. yes. 
So if I if I just use a pin mode like like uh, the uh, the throughput uh, based uh, feeding structure at any point inside this uh, uh, the cavity, so would the uh, study will going to be same or it will going to different? No, it will going to different. Main thing is that you have to launch the power. Yes, yes, see, obviously. Hmm. So see, if your cavity is there, this is the cavity is there. Let's say that this is cavity. So main thing is that let's say I am feeding F naught power, F naught frequency. I have to be sure that whether I am feeding from here. Is getting entered inside or not? Uh -huh. Here you have 50 ohm line. Right, sir. Here it will be governed. It is a waveguide structure. You know there is Z naught something one over something one F over F C some formula set. The type of structure formula is there. Yes, sir. We will have some different impedance. Let's say let us take 377. 377. Let's say some 200 values. 200 ohm. So uh -huh. now we have to match this 500 to this one, or maybe some lower values. Let's say 20, or maybe some lesser value. Generally, it is lesser. So how to match it? If you if you don't match it, then you won't be able to do that. So for that, what we do? We just apply the inset type of feed, something like this. Uh -huh. Inset, something like this. This type of feed. So by we have removed this one, so you can remove it. That's so it is just used for matching. This is used for matching. This right, type sir, of right. thing. Right. Another sir. is if you can find different different literatures. They use some transitions, something tapered, something like this. Also, they have used. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then in the literature, you can find. Basic thing is that you have to excite the means you have to feed to this this one. Right. Yeah. Anything else? Yes, sir. Thank uh, you, sir. Hello. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Nidhi here from NIT. Actually, you told us that uh, uh, if uh, uh, we edge a rectangular uh, shape on the patch, then it will merge the two modes. Then uh, it would uh, affect on the shape of the mode. After the combination of the two modes, then uh, what will be the uh, final shape of that mode? Please explain. No, mode will change. Definitely, definitely, basically, definitely mode will change. Not mode, it will not change. Miss, it will not, it will, it will not be pure PE110 mode. Yeah, yeah. It will be something modified. So what then what would be the shape of that mode? See, what would be the shape? It will be same. Yeah, Let's yeah. say see if you have TE110 mode. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I want to make a correction. I'm not etching on a patch. I'm etching on a cavity. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sir. Okay. I'm not. So we have a cavity. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like this. So if I etch a slot at this location, so if T110 mode, I will have, let's say, I will have something like. Like this, you will be there. So it will be somewhat pulta will be there. Definitely pulta will be there. Similarly, pure it, will, it won't be pure, but it will it will be similar to that. Yeah. And also, you, you you think of let's say if it has a frequency of let's say nine gigahertz. So if you etch a slot, it will become eight point six or eight point seven gigahertz. Means frequency it will be frequency will be also because it is a, you are doing the capacitive loading to the resonator. Okay, if you see the equivalent circuit, if I see the equivalent circuit, what, what will be equivalent circuit? You have a resonator L, C, R. So L, this will be your thumb, that is some port one, let's say, the feeding one, port one. So this is a resonator, I started from the world. I connect it by the feed one. Now, if I etch a slot, it's something like a, I have introduced a capacitor. Introduce a capacitor, if you introduce a capacitor, then, if you earlier, if your F naught was one over, that is one over two pi under root of L L naught C naught. So you have introduced an extra capacitor. So yes. adding. So again, depends on whether it is series or shunt capacitors. Yes. So there we have to decide. So again, the shifting will be the frequency will be there. 
Even if you introduce a, if I say, if I introduce a via, frequency will be shifted. Via, via, because via will be something like via will be acting as a, acting as an inductor. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, yeah. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Then sir. I will have two minutes. Yeah. Sir, I have designed an antenna. So if I change the height, modes uh, also changing, sir. For 0.58 height, I am getting modes, and uh, 1.6, uh, I am not getting modes. Now, its resonance frequency will change. Mode, mode will not. Mode, mode will remain as it is, unless your H is is much smaller than A and B. Yes, sir. Because we are saying that 110 mode, so if you have is H is smaller than B, then mode will be there, and you can observe the uh, means if you have uh, let's say uh, okay now what 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 will be the problem? Problem will be you have increased your height, but you have not increased your feeding mechanism. Feeding mechanism has to be changed because. The 50 ohm line which you have for 508, let's say you have a microchip line here. This width of when h equals to 0 0.508 of 0.5 mm, this width will be W1 and this will be some W2 when your h is 1.57. You cannot keep everything same. Okay, sir. Did you get sir. that point? Yes, sir. Next, uh, because width of the feed, because your substrate height is changed, it is now becoming larger, thicker. Yes, sir. So, so for that, that is why I told you study the modes in the eigen mode solver. Then okay. you can you can say that if you study the modes, it will be clear to you. Everything okay. will be clear. Next, okay. sir. So, I, yeah. Sir, electric field other? lines are from positive to negative charge, sir. But uh, uh, circles you are drawing, I don't understand, sir. Which electric one? Field. Electric field lines. Yeah. Generally, it is from no. positive charge to negative charge, sir. Definitely, definitely true. So, uh, why we okay. are writing circles? Uh, that one. Okay, these are okay. So you want to say that these lines? Uh, yes, sir. These are electric E field ISO lines. Okay. ISO lines means the field which will have same magnitude. So I have drawn, I have shown you earlier in this one. This one. The, if you see the color, yellow color, red color, blue color, green color, these are the fields which will have the constant magnitude. It is shown from here also. If you see this 3D, this pattern. So the fields are nearly have the same magnitude. Okay. Did you did you get the point? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, any standard procedure for inset feeding, sir? Formula. See, again, it is error and trial. It's not a standard. Means just so I I have shown you different types of feeding mechanism. You just launch design the feed and means you design so you can find in the literature different type of transitions are there available in the literature you design it and you will get it from there this you, you check at that frequency whether the particular mode is getting excited or not okay sir you don't you. place the slot okay no need to place the slot slot you will place later on so what you will see you will just see a dip in the because if you have if the power is going inside the cavity, you will feel like just a dip inside it, not more than that. Okay, sir. It will be very small, maybe one dB or two dB, less than one dB. Yeah, dip. Okay. Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, it is really wonderful session. Just I wanted no. to know can, can I say resonating frequency equal to uh, T110 mode, for example? Resonating frequency of TE110 mode, yeah, uh -huh. it is, it is no. a resonating frequency, definitely. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, sir, can I say resonating frequency is nothing but my TE110 uh, mode? Nee, can I say resonating, resonating? Every mode will have resonating frequency. Right. 
Yeah. So mode will have resulting frequency. Okay. Okay. You call it by it depends on you. You want to see the name. Whatever we have given the name, that is T one one zero. To understand it properly, I will call it mode one, mode two, mode three. I don't care. Okay. Okay. The, okay. Because of the understanding, because it have the field pattern like T E. It have the field pattern. That is why we call it T E one one zero mode. One one zero means number of half wavelength variation in the x direction, number of half wavelength variation in the negative one half wavelength variation here, one half wavelength variation in the y direction, and no variation in the z direction. To have the understanding, I don't care. I will not call it T one one zero. I will call it mode one, mode two, mode three. No problem. Okay. Okay. To get the resulting frequency, you will have to use this formula. So you will get the this one. Okay, and sir, from S one one curve, I can come to know the bandwidth of my antenna, right? From that S one one curve, ten dB. S one one curve will not give you bandwidth. S one one will, if unless you have to check the radiation, whether it is having the radiation efficiency or not. S one one will only give you whether the power is going inside or not. Okay, okay. It can be absorber also. Power will go inside. Power is getting absorbed. No problem. Right. Radiation yes. efficiency. If if you have radiation efficiency greater than eighty degree, eighty percent or ninety percent, then you will call it as the antenna and corresponding S one one will be less than minus ten dB. Will be a bandwidth. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. Thank so you. I will take so a break much. of five minutes. So I will stop here. So I will. My talk is not finished. I will take a five minutes break. Then I will continue. Okay. Just okay, just sir, five sir. minutes. Yeah. Okay, minutes. all the participants. Five minute break is there. Thereafter, sir, we continue the session.
okay so i will start with so i will take another design hello yeah is it audible yes sir yes sir you are audible so this is okay. sukun mishra uh, from gju bilaspur yeah uh, sir my question is that when you have uh, edged the uh, slot then uh, uh, how it will be added in series or in uh, parallel to the equivalent circuit i have to think over it okay so resonate i don't have any, i have to think over it Just sit down and think over it okay sir sir generally it will be in series i think depending on the you see the current field pattern and uh, i okay. think it, this should be in series in series yeah <laughs> okay so now so i will start with the this was the some of the things uh, i have discussed about the siw slot antenna another section i will be talking about that is miniaturized siw antennas so miniaturized siw antenna means we want to have smaller siw antenna you know if you use if you use this one if you use uh, if you use a siw cavity then what we can do uh, Mr. Sir, the blue cavity size because we are using TE one one zero mode or maybe higher order modes. So size of the cavity is very big if you go on for the lower frequencies. So in order to have the we want miniaturized antenna, so they are not compatible with the whatever the we find now whatever we have. So what we have, the Sir, the blue have the concept of they must division. Miss, what we have. so if you know okay i will just show you here if you have anything really symmetrical if we any okay, i'll just show from the, this one so if we if i have the e110 mode let's say the e110 mode or te11 let's say te10 mode of the cavity of the wave guide this is my wave Modes is like this. This is plus, minus, then plus, and so on. So now, so if I can apply, this is my side walls here. So what can I can have? So this is my SIW cavity. SIW SIW that is subsequently wave guide. So now if I divide, let's say, so here at the center, if I divide. this is called magnetic wall why it is called because electric field is maximum so magnetic field will be zero so you'll have h equals to zero maximum because electric field is just opposite of this one not zero it can be depends on the that is it is having the minimum so if i have if i cut by this one magnetic field is zero means it is called perfect open perfect open or z equals to infinite so z, 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 z equals to infinite means we have cut it and make it open so we get this we get that is called hm siw we call it half mode siw because it is just half of this one half of the size will be half similarly this is half similarly another thing is quarter this is i am show, show i have shown you in the wave guide if you think of a cavity so in cavity if you have this one so if if i make a cavity side walls like this so i will have this something like this so this thing this things so i will have half mode hn siw cavity will be there so its performance will be nearly same to the siw cavity but size is somewhat bigger than the half of the somewhat bigger why reason behind is that if you apply the perfect if you apply the perfect open here the fields will be degrading so in order to have smooth degradation of field so what we just extend something as it is shown in the this one also 
so just exactly not something some slight bigger than that one so this is half moon set blue similarly if you have a quarter moon set of blue so if we can uh, basic thing is that wherever you have found a symmetry you can divide it or bifurcate it using the bifurcate it using the cavet bifurcate it using the magnetic ball here if you can see here they have the they have applied the side walls at these two locations so means at this location and at this location both the locations they have applied so they have divided so instead of having this this is the half mode this is the quarter mode they have quarter mode they have and further they have the eighth mode means further you can bifurcate means unless you can go on bifurcating it unless you have the yeah unless you can have the symmetrical field configuration symmetrical magnetic field i can have so depending upon that people have designed it so people have designed it different types of that is quarter mode siw and dina so they have they have decided it and they have designed so it will have so it will support all the modes whatever the whatever the fields are supported by that one means if you can see from the fields are supported here and here so it will have it will support the te110 mode te220 mode and yeah 220 mode so support so you can design the antenna so here we don't have any slot here the radiation of the antenna is from the this wall the magnetic wall of this one so it will have some radiation from this wall that is b1 and b2 from these walls we have radiation and they they will your antenna will like to radiate okay so now and here the direction of radiation will be because you have radiation from this wall that is b1 and b2 it will be equivalent will be in the maximum radiation will be at the 45 degree from this b1 and b2 okay now so what we want to show you this we have discussed so now if we have the rectangular rectangular wave guide so that rectangular wave guide we can bifurcate it or we can divide it till eighth mode when we have we have shown the half mode we have shown the quarter mode and we have shown the eighth mode so but it cannot be i mean it cannot be go on into infinite because the fields are not properly these fields are not symmetrical but in the uh, and they have they don't have the uh, one more thing we for certain application most of the applications we require omnidirectional or cosmic direction radiation pattern so they have the at the background they have the at the background they have the copper plate the ground plate so the fields will be not omnidirectional so that is why what we want so we use another type of antenna another type of cavity which is circular siw cavity whose fields configurations are like this i will not go into the detail so it will support it will also support the g that is tm mode again the name that is tm to z here z is this direction it is different from the tm of the rectangular siw cavity so now it supports so if we see the fields the fields of this cavity that is dominant mode is there is te here the name nomenclature will be different because nomenclature will be that is te 010 Zero means number of half wavelength variation along the pi direction, and then number of one is number of wavelength variation in the r direction. Then zero means z direction. So as you can see, there is no variation along the pi direction. It is symmetrical. So zero. Then r direction it is having the z direction is having the maxima, minima, and then minima. So they have the one half wavelength variation. In z direction again the same thing, no variation. so it is symmetrical you can see if i bifurcate along aa dash or bb dash i get the same of structure this is my half mode siw this is cavity not transmission and cavity it will have the same resonant frequency of this slight change will be there similarly further since the fields are symmetrical i will bifurcate it along the uh, that is ob so i will get quarter mode i can get further i can by fields are symmetrical i can bifurcate it so i will get quarter mode then oc long oc i will get eighth mode and then 16th mode so you can go on doing this bifurcation till this one because fields are symmetrical here this field configuration are symmetrical you can do the bifurcation but again the technology limits depending on the fabrication so that limits the fabrication application 
So what we can see from here. So if we bifurcate the TM zero first mode is this zero one zero. Now you can see in the R direction two zero two that is two zero two zero and the R direction here zero three zero. Now three variations, two half elliptic variations and so on. Now in the now what we we told you if you do the bifurcation the that mode will be only supported if the field supports it. Now you can see that for the first mode that is zero one zero mode all the things will be supported, but for this TM one one zero or all the modes this quarter mode and eighth modes are not supported. And for this submissive you have to check the you can see you have to check the field pattern whether they are having the symmetricity along the phi direction. You can do the bifurcation or not that you need to understand. Okay, now you can see this that for for radially radial modes that is for which have the symmetry along the phi direction, it supports all the supports. Here you can zero one zero zero two zero modes all will be supported. Okay, now so the another mode is TM one zero. This will not be supported, and T TM two one zero will be also not supported. Now depending upon the field, so what we have decided, so we have decided. Okay, so this was the so you can see the fields for that is zero one zero and zero two zero modes. So you can have if you can see the it is having maximum at the center and at the periphery it will have the zero. So if I take a pi of this one like a, a pi shape structure, so that is sixty fourth we call it sixty fourth mode. So it will have the field symmetry. Now here have we have only one variation. Here we have two variation. So here we have shown. So you can do do on bifurcation because it has the field symmetry. Now the again the question comes. The modes will not be. It will be something like similar to TE. That is similar to TM zero one zero or zero two zero mode. Will be there. It will not be exactly the same mode. The similar mode, but it will support the same field configuration. Now for omnidirectional radiation pattern, let's say this one. If you have this one, so what? We want. We have reduced our structure to the smaller one for omnidirectional addition pattern. What we have we done? We remove a part. We make the ground plane to be a partial ground plane. So what we will have? We have the addition at the other plane also, other direction also. So, so this we did the eigen mode analysis, and what we find out the for the first mode and second mode that is TM zero one zero mode and TM zero two zero mode. The fields are that is for the first mode that is T that is 3.56 and 5.56. If I remove the ground plane, make it partial ground, just to have a series of VRs for the this for the supporting of forming of the cavity. It is not a cavity. We will not call it cavity. It will be TM zero one zero one zero mode and zero two zero like modes or similar mode, quasi modes. So they will have similar field configuration. Okay. Similarly, higher we move higher bifurcation, thirty-two, sixty-fourth also it will have similar fields are nearly same. So that can be used for the design. Now, if I excite, now you have to again, I, as I told you, we have to excite at that location. The fields are non-zero, so you have we connect a field line here. So that we can, if you connect a field line here, so the, both the modes will be excited. So we'll have radiations for the TM zero first mode and second mode. So it will have radiation pattern. So, so now the question comes. The it is something like you can see those who have studied the loop antenna. It is something like a loop antenna, or they call it FIFA antenna also. So we have compared with this one that is inverted FIFA antenna. That is FIFA antenna. So it is similar to the FIFA antenna for the first mode, but for the second mode it is not because it is not. This is not radiating second mode. It is radiating only the first mode. You can see its gain. Gain is something like that is 2.3 and 2.1 for the first mode. Both loop antenna and both antennas have same gain, but for the second mode, it will not have any gain. That is 0.2, but it have the gain of 1.9. This proves that this is not a loop antenna. So this is whatever we are getting the both the modes we are getting because of the because we we are getting because due to the yeah due due to the this circular side of the cavity. The circular side W cavity. Okay, so now based on that, so this is having the very narrow bandwidth, not very 
somewhat narrow bandwidth so we want to have higher bandwidth so what we do the we want to apply the bandwidth increase the bandwidth then what we did we introduce some inter digital capacitance so if we introduce inter digital capacitance then what we did we have introduced a basic thing is that we have applied a 16th mode and we have introduced some inter digital capacitance then bandwidth is increased and gain is nearly about four, gain is also constant so and further for achieving the broadband so we have combined the 32nd mode and the 32nd and the 64th mode so this was our conductor means this is something like we have this is structure and this is something like 30 64th mode this is 64 this is 32nd we combine these two so we come up with this type of structure so this is structure we will have this is the hybrid structure combining the properties of and we have the inter digital something uh, this one here it is basically combination of 32nd and 64th mode so what we have so not going to detail just design chart so it explanation can be thought of if you have 32nd mode so it will have radiated at some frequency because it will have certain this uh, foster model and if i introduce a periodic vrs the periodic metallic removal so it will be because i have removed at the periodic level so what happens so we have introduced again as i told you we introduce a capacitance that is inter digital not inter digital we have introduced a capacitance this will be uh, bring the frequency lower here the frequency of resonance was 6.6 6 6.5 not it has reduced to 6 6 gigahertz okay now think of you do the similar thing for the 64th mode okay we do the similar thing for 64th mode the frequency will be somewhat similar to that 6 gigahertz now if i combine the 32 and 64th mode then what we will have we have the uh, we have this structures this equivalent circuit will be 32nd mode 64th mode and there will be inter inter resonator coupling the means the coupling between the two resonators this structure because of this inter digital you can call it some capacitance so we have achieved the byte bandwidth out of it so instead of having because the cdws are famous for their uh, means they are uh, means they are not good for the narrow band because the mode because they, we use particular mode for the dependent for the radiation so if you use particular mode it will have the certain quality factor and quality factor are high if you have had high quality factor then you have smaller bandwidth okay so now this is just we have verified it so they are having the similar some radiation pattern okay okay so i will stop here so these are the some of my presentation if you have any any other questions you can ask me sir and sir yeah sir yeah sir how do we calculate 64th mode is it that formula based initially you have shown no 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 64th mode means see, don't don't get confused the 60 this 64th this okay so if i have this one if i bifurcate it so i will call it half mode half mode will be half of like this if i further bifurcate it because of the symmetrical magnetic field i will this is such a i will call it quarter mode quarter mode then quarter means quarter if you divide quarter by again divide it by it will be eighth mode eighth mode then a for eighth mode you divide it. let's say you have this is your eighth mode i divide i will call it 16th mode then in the same fashion you will get 64th mode don't get confused with the first mode second mode like that okay sir okay yes yes it is clear 64th part of siw cavity that is why it is called 61 by 64th mode okay okay sir okay sir yeah. okay sir yeah sir what are the 
Even yeah. modes and odd modes, sir. Any? Which one? Even modes and odd. In a set. Even mode. In a set of blue. Yes, sir. Even modes. Yeah. Huh. Tell me. In some papers, they have mentioned even two one zero mode, odd two one zero mode, like this, sir. So. Even two one zero. Two one zero ah, yes. or two one zero mode. Yeah. I don't know. Even mode means basically the field which has a symmetrical field configuration. But okay. again the same field. Let's say even means an odd mode. Let's say uh, you can say no, no, no. But both are even means if we have different field, they are called odd mode only. I don't know. Miss, you, you just okay. send me an email. I will. Check it and I will get back to you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, sir. What are the what are the gains that Hello. you are getting uh, through these antennas? Which one? Mini sized one? The, the the last one. Yes, sir. The last one that you have shown. Two to three TV. Two, not more than that. Two to three TV. They are not for the high gain antennas. So, sir, so they are both. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. If you want to go for a higher uh, uh, gain. A structure with, with with a similar structure, and then uh, we we need to put it into an array. So is it is it possible to go for it? Is there any paper so, or some is doing? So I I don't have any information because generally if you want to have array slots are preferred. Uh -huh. Slots are preferred because slots will have because this is for the omnidirectional omnidirectional relation pattern. Yes sir. Yes sir. Only direction, then we don't prefer it for the directional one. For antenna array, you must have the slots because slot will have good front to back ratio. You will not have yes. very really good front to back ratio. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So another so, thing, what are the fabrication yeah. process that you go for the SIW? Means you put a hole and then you shot the, the hole. Okay, okay, the, okay. Yeah, yeah. How do I fabricate it? Yes, sir. SIW, especially SIW. Okay, SIW. There are different techniques people are using it. So uh, that is fabrication. What you can do it. So, so again, uh, let us say that if you have this one, so we drill a via first of all. We yes, drill a via. Yes. Okay, drill by using that uh, drilling the via by the drilling machine. Then yes. after that, it is up to you. It depends on the whatever the techniques available to you. You can use you that is plated through hole, but it is costly. So it is, it is. here, what you can do, you can deposit the copper layer. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm sir. drawing the side view. Just see, this is something uh, sir, like in this. The, in the similar process, sir. In the similar process, I'm facing an issue. I have a Rogers substrate of two eight seven zero, which is yeah. having a which is having a thickness of three point two. So okay. for, for, a higher, for a higher gain, I'm using a uh, uh, like broader um, type of height. Height is three point two substrate. Okay. So in that case, when I am putting it into the drilling machine or some uh, like a PCB printing machine. In that case, yeah. it is creating lots of issue because it, 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 the all of the fibers from the substrate is going to stick to the drilling machine. So that's why yeah. even, even the manufacturer is not not having such process that they can put the PTH into it. Is there is there any mechanism for it apart apart from PTH or putting a hole and then shorting it there? The main thing is that you drill a hole and do that. Okay. 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 Drill a hole means drill a hole. You you will require more number of drill bits. Yes, sir, yes, sir. yes. Sir. Yeah. Drill a hole. Sir, you cannot have it. Yeah. Sir, in continuation to Mr. Abhay's Abhay's question only, uh, sir, is there effect of the diameter of the wires on the response of the antenna? Definitely. If we increase or decrease the diameter of the wires. Definitely, definitely, definitely. See, uh, main thing is the cavity. So this is. This is the diameter of the cavity. The right. diameter of the S, D, and S is the spacing. Right. Okay. So, so actually, sir, as, as, even yeah. when I was uh, simulating the designs, when I decreased the diameter of the wire, the results yeah. got improved undoubtedly because the shorting is better. Yeah, if definitely, we definitely. Decrease the diameter. But yeah. sir, actually, uh, if we go to the hardware implementation of the same, it is very difficult to get wires of, say, for example, 0.3 mm dia or 0.2 mm dia. So, what can be done in that case, sir? I mean, generally, don't use it. 
use either 0.7 or 0.8 like that or 1 mm not more than that yeah not that is the standard that. size actually but i was not getting the result on that so i reduced the size to 0.5 and 0.3 mm now you can get a 1 mm you keep it 1 mm or 0.7 0.8 because drilling uh, your bit will be very thin and it will broke very easily right sir so so what you can do you can choose this one you will get what you can do here instead of having making as equals to 2d you can make it as equals to 1.5d okay yeah. it requires this as equals to 1.5d you can do it see as as, as he told as he as the earlier question pyrite is used a very soft substrate if we, if the thickness is that is 0.508 mm or 0.78 mm mm but yeah, as yeah. you have the substrate it will be difficult it is yeah, not an easy the same problem sir i even i was on working on the same substrate rt do right 5880 0.508 mm so the no, it is easy i would it is easy i would it is okay. easy but uh, 1.57 or 0.5 it is easy right 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 actually for me also even right. so even we have, we have used this 3.2 for the three dimensional dna we did it i will show you some of the figures here that is three dimensional dna we have designed so i actually have worked for the, uh, the siw hall and dna yeah this one this one we, this one we have this one we have this is on 3.2 okay sir okay we have designed yeah. ah yeah and another question sir actually yeah. i am i work up on the siw horn antennas and okay. uh, this is basically of uh, three dimensional horn antennas and i have four horn antennas uh, and then i feed it so basically what what sir has asked is ki if we uh, i have put my wires dimension as 0.5 mm as a radius yeah. so 1 mm is 1 mm is the uh, overall uh, diameter of the wires so yeah. if, we, if since my antenna is working for 28 gigahertz if we go beyond that so in that case mm -hmm. we definitely we need to just put uh, it down to a smaller level instead of correct. 1 mm very correct yeah. but but it is actually for, unfeasible yes sir it is yeah it is unfeasible it is required the tech you require more sophisticated technology for do that doing that right yeah I have done it for I have done it for below twenty gigahertz. I have not used it for the millimeter wave circuits. Maximum maximum work we did it for the X band because the fabric because of the fabrication facility and whatever the fabrication facility and measuring facility we have at Kharagpur. Yeah, that is the constraint actually. That is the constraint. We have, so that is the only. We have to do whatever is available. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> right, is, sir. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's it's a quite difficult to work upon such higher frequency. We have the facilities yeah. to measure measure uh, the facility and also to make other understand also. Miss, yes, sir, because yes. every time you go to the manufacturer, you cannot go every time and tell them. Yes, sir. That's the difficulty. So we have we have the facility for manufacturing till zero point three mm, even zero point one mm. Uh, one of my students has done. so we have the facility over here but we don't have the anechoic chamber so that's why i'm i'm searching for it but nobody is having a facility for 30 gigahertz okay now here we have the anechoic chamber for 20 i don't know i, I have recently i don't i have to check it 40 gigahertz we have at i dudki we have for measurement okay, okay. okay sir okay sir i will i will i like to take a help from you uh, later on sir i will just okay no, no no problem yeah thank you sir thanks a lot anything else anyone else anyone having question you can write down in the chat box also or you can so if you have, don't have any, any doubts hello yeah yes uh, good afternoon sir sir yeah, afternoon. i am sachin kumar Uh, sachin kumar yadav 
sir yeah. i am working on the uh, that is a dielectric resonator antennas so sometimes yeah. uh, uh, that is uh, choosing the mods is very difficult this is a t mod t uh, t m mod or h mod or H. so yeah so how to judge uh, these kind of mod uh, uh, because uh, this one is a dielectric resonator and is uh, existed that is a te mod he uh, mod or hem mod see you have to study that yeah i i don't have any idea of, okay see basic thing is that let's say so some papers uh, sir i studied some papers uh, he i don't have any idea about the dielectric resonator because in dielectric resonators the modes are hybrid in nature they are not pure te or pure tem they are hybrid modes basically okay. hem or ehm something like that i don't have okay any many idea. papers sir represented uh, this one is a te mod or uh, hem mod ne te2 t they say that te2 what te2x te2y something like that they don't say generally te te is some t see they say it is something like te okay 2x or te2y something like this or tm2 x something like this not te tm they See here, whatever I am was discussing, this is let's say this is J direction. So here we are calling it as yeah. TE, that is TE to J. That is TE to yes. J. Means in J direction, it will have transverse electric field. Your H J will be zero. Sorry, yeah, yes. E J. So E J will be zero. You have only in the X Y plane. In a J direction, na. No? J yeah. direction, J yeah. E J E J will be zero, oh. na? No? Transverse. It will have only E X uh, yes. and E Y. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, yeah. here only difficulty the choose the mod, sir. Yeah, uh, this one is T mod or H mod, hybrid mod. Of, yeah, you have to go uh, through paper. This thing and, is very sir, this, uh, difficult. You have to get while doing the research. You have to get few search papers, search the standard book. So for dielectric resonator, Carfage is there. Carfage book is there. Okay, sir. DR resonators, you can see the DR yeah. book is there. I don't remember okay, Carfage. Okay. Very good book is there. Uh, LUK look is also uh, uh, that is a dielectric resonator antennas book, sir. Uh -huh. Yeah. Look, sir. Yeah, you look. Please look. Yeah. Okay. Thank. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other? So, anyone have it in routes from the participant sides? Can you still ask? Okay. So, if you don't have any doubt, then can we yes, conclude sir. the session? Yes, sir. I think uh, no doubts are there. So, I would like to thank Dr. Akhilesh Mohan sir for delivering such a informative session on SIW techniques, its modes, its fabrication, and explaining different types of excitation for this trending topic, substrate integrated waveguide techniques. On behalf of EC department. GB Pant Institute of Engineering and Technology and all the participants I would like to thank Dr. Akhilesh Mohan for sparing his precious time to delivering such a informative session thank you so much sir okay Th thank you Rishi Rai. thank you Rishi thank you all thank you. so if you want to discuss anything about SW you can call you can yeah you can write down my email is given on the web, web page you like can in the group yeah. of Mon, sir if you have any yeah. doubts you can after the session also you can also contact with, with uh, dr aklesh monsa
ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल थैंक यू बाय सो ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स द सेशन इज एंडेड नेक्स्ट सेशन विल बी एट थ्री ओ क्लॉक थ्री टू फाइव बाय डॉक्टर द लिंक विल बी शेयर थर्टी मिनट्स प्राय and it will start at 3 o'clock this is a